Hidden in the heart of London, MI6's top secret headquarters remained so discreet that even its own employees had to go through elaborate measures to find it. Don't miss a beat, because we are going back in history to explore the incredible secrets behind this iconic spy sanctuary. It's a real-world espionage story, and we're taking you on a journey through the fascinating world of spies and secrets. The history of MI6 HQ. Vauxhall Cross, as it stands today, is a monumental edifice of espionage. Its imposing imperial design is the modern face of the iconic service, but it's essential to understand that MI6 HQ has come a long way from its humbler beginnings. Before Vauxhall Cross, MI6 adhered to its motto of always secret by hiding in plain sight. In 1909, this very building was labelled as the office of Messrs. Raisin, Falcon Limited, Shippers and Exporters. Only a select few were aware that it was, in fact, the headquarters of MI6's founder, Sir Mansfield Cumming. Cumming, known as C, was a workaholic with a legacy. He even signed his name as C and wrote exclusively in green ink, a tradition that continues for the head of the service to this day. His obsession with secrecy knew no bounds. In 1919, when he moved his office to a townhouse in West London, visitors were first instructed to go to an office six kilometres away on the Strand, where they were finally given the address. He even tried to keep the location hidden from his boss, the Director of Military Intelligence. MI6 continued the practice of renting commercial office space under a false name for several decades. However, as the Cold War dawned, the limitations of this approach became apparent. In 1964, the service was preparing to move out of the building in the exclusive St. James area of West London, where it had been posing as the Minimax Fire Extinguisher Company. The service faced a shock when the landlord started showing prospective tenants around before they had fully vacated. Later that year, MI6 moved south of the Thames and rented the newly built Century House. But this new HQ wasn't much better in terms of secrecy. At a time when the existence of the service was officially denied by the government, the occupants of Century House were widely known. The Daily Telegraph once quipped that it was London's worst kept secret, known only to every taxi driver, tourist guide and KGB agent. It wasn't just the building's identity that was problematic, it also had large glass windows, perfect for prying eyes. Moreover, a nearby petrol station made it an obvious target for a potential attack. These challenges and the evolving landscape of espionage led to the construction of the modern MI6 headquarters at Vauxhall Cross, where secrecy and security could be maintained at a higher level. So why Vauxhall Cross? The selection of this location was not arbitrary, it was a strategic decision rooted in several advantages. First and foremost, Vauxhall Cross offered unparalleled security. Its imposing and modern design was conceived with the utmost discretion in mind. The triple glazed windows, bomb-proof stone exterior and extra thick doors made it a formidable fortress protecting against external threats. Moreover, Vauxhall Cross was strategically positioned in the heart of London. This central location allowed MI6 to maintain proximity to other government agencies and vital resources, facilitating seamless collaboration while keeping essential intelligence functions centralized. With Vauxhall Cross as its new home, MI6 was poised to embrace the future of espionage, leaving behind the vulnerabilities of the past. In the 1800s, it was the location of the Vauxhall Pleasure Gardens, a popular entertainment destination of its time. However, as time marched on, 
the pleasure gardens made way for industrial development. Following the demolition of the gardens in the 1850s, the site saw the rise of various industrial buildings, including a glass factory, vinegar works, and even a gin distillery. As the years passed, the area witnessed transformations, including the construction of barge houses and an inn named The Vine. Archaeological excavations during the construction of the MI6 building unearthed the remnants of 17th century glass kilns, further revealing the rich historical tapestry that lies beneath the surface. In 1983, the site found itself in the hands of property developers Regalian Properties, sparking a competition to determine its future. Architect Terry Farrell emerged as the winner of this competition, initially proposing an urban village. However, plans evolved, leading to the development of office blocks designed to house a government agency. The site was sold for £130 million in 1989, with construction planned to span three years and John Lang as the chosen builder. Interestingly, the future occupant of the building was not initially MI6, but rather a government agency. However, Destiny had other plans, and SIS, or MI6, ultimately became the occupant of the building. Farrell's architectural design drew inspiration from various sources, including 1930s industrial modernist architecture, exemplified by structures like Bankside and Battersea power stations, as well as the aesthetics of Mayan and Aztec religious temples. The construction process of the MI6 building was no ordinary affair. Regalian Properties approached the government in 1987 to gauge their interest in the proposed structure. Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher gave her approval for the purchase of the building in 1988. The National Audit Office, NAO, estimated the final cost at £135.05 million, pounds, encompassing the site purchase and the basic building, or £152.6 million, pounds, when accounting for the service's specialised requirements. Rumours suggest that the site may include an underground tunnel connecting the building to Whitehall, highlighting the clandestine nature of MI6's operations. The MI6 building's complexity becomes evident when examining its architectural layout. It comprises numerous layers, resulting in a staggering 60 separate roof areas. The structure incorporates 25 different types of glass, encompassing 130,000 square feet, 12,000 square meters, of glass and aluminium. To ensure maximum security, the building features triple glazed windows. Due to the sensitive nature of MI6's work, a substantial portion of the building lies below street level, connected by a network of underground corridors. The building is not merely functional, it also provides amenities for its staff, including a sports hall, gymnasium, aerobic studio, squash court, and a restaurant. To enhance its security, the MI6 building is surrounded by two moats. Finally, after years of meticulous planning and construction, the MI6 building was officially completed in April 1994. It was inaugurated by none other than Queen Elizabeth II, accompanied by Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, on the 14th of July 1994. In September 2000, the building faced an audacious attack by unidentified assailants who utilized a Russian-built RPG-22 anti-tank rocket. Although the attack resulted in superficial damage, it raised serious security concerns. The Metropolitan Police later discovered the discarded rocket launcher in Spring Gardens Park in Vauxhall, along with remnants of the rocket itself, which had exploded against an eighth-floor window. Suspicion fell on dissident Irish Republicans as the potential culprits. Following the attack, journalist Alan Judd commented in the Daily Telegraph, noting that it had ignited a debate about the building's high-profile visibility. Some argued that its prominence made it an obvious target, 
while others contended that a headquarters with robust security measures had been vindicated as necessary. On June 1st, 2007, the MI6 building and its surrounding area received special protected status under Section 128 of the Serious Organized Crime and Police Act 2005. This designation made it a specific criminal offense for anyone to trespass on the site, further underscoring the importance of security. In August 2010, security concerns resurfaced when two individuals from North Wales were arrested after a parcel bomb was discovered at the SIS building's postal handling center, highlighting the persistent threats faced by this intelligence hub. The MI6 building has also played host to various high-profile visits. Queen Elizabeth II made a second visit to Vauxhall Cross in February 2006, underlining the monarch's keen interest in the operations conducted within its walls. In July 2008, Charles, Prince of Wales, paid a visit to the headquarters, demonstrating the royal family's involvement in matters of national security. In June 2013, Prince Harry received a briefing on intelligence matters during his visit to Vauxhall Cross, further showcasing the importance of this facility in the realm of British intelligence. Lastly, during the Thames Diamond Jubilee pageant in 2012, part of the celebrations marking Queen Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee, the London Philharmonic Orchestra played the iconic James Bond theme as they passed by the MI6 building. This light-hearted moment revealed a sense of camaraderie among London's landmarks, with even MI6 joining the festivities with discreet rows of bunting. From its storied history to its architectural marvels and security challenges, the MI6 headquarters is an example of the ever-evolving world of espionage. As the world changes, this iconic building stands firm, ready to face the challenges of the future and protect the nation it serves.